In May of 2014, I finished my last final, packed a suitcase, took selfies with my family, and headed to O'Hare International Airport to catch a flight to Nepal. I was excited to be studying abroad, but it was my first time ever leaving the country, and I was extremely nervous. I remember having this constant stream of questions and worries in my mind in the weeks leading up to the trip. How do I get on an airplane? What if I get a blood clot in my leg from the 14-hour flight? What if the food is really weird? How will I go to the bathroom in Nepali toilets? How will I survive in a country that speaks a language that I barely know two words of? Namaste! Dhanibad! And then something amazing happened. I just got on the plane, and I didn't get a blood clot, and I managed to navigate three airports, and I managed to arrive in Nepal. And the very first thing there to greet me was the overwhelming chaos of Kathmandu traffic. <laughs> This noisy, chaotic, pungent mass of vehicles all trying to go everywhere at the same time. And I remember sitting in the van and watching all these cars misses by inches and thinking, what am I doing here? And the thing is, I felt like that a lot the first few days, completely overwhelmed. But the people there were so kind and forgiving and willing to share about their lives that I soon forgot to be uncomfortable. I quickly learned that even though culture and place are very important to our individual identities, they separate us as humans far less than I thought they did. My time in Nepal was three long and wonderful weeks spent learning about healthcare. We visited hospitals and nonprofits and rural villages and health outposts. Each organization we visited taught us about healthcare in a different way. We learned about the pros and cons of Nepali primary healthcare in cities from Patan Hospital. We learned about Mighty Nepal and their work combating human trafficking on the Nepal-India border. We even went to a rural village and learned about maternal and child health from a female community health volunteer working and living in the area. And each person we talked to taught us not only about the problems that their community faced, but the ways that their communities were fixing those problems on their own. And it was amazing because in America, a lot of the time what you hear about is how we are helping developing countries. But in Nepal, I saw so much more. I saw Nepali people helping themselves. And it was an amazing lesson. It is so easy to talk about the world as if there was this invisible line dividing first world and third world countries. That divide is everywhere, from the way we talk about Ebola on the news to sad charity advertisements exploiting children in Africa for more money. And there are lines from the global wealth distribution to the imbalance in political power our leaders hold. But studying abroad taught me there's no line dividing our humanity. Mothers and babies dying from treatable conditions in a different country is not someone else's problem, it is our problem. There's no difference between us and them. There's only us, a world full of people affected by each other's actions. And I didn't truly understand that until I studied abroad. When I came back to the States, I realized how much studying abroad had changed me. It's so easy to get caught up in your daily life without ever thinking about the world beyond you. But there is so much more to experience and so many more people out there to teach you about their lives. I don't think the way I think about the world will ever be the same as before. That's why you should study abroad too. You won't regret it.